another day another safety tips a confined space is an area that is enclosed or partially enclosed and it is not intended for continuous human occupancy examples of confined spaces include tanks vessels silos sewers tunnels pipelines and storage bins these spaces are often characterized by limited entry and exit points poor ventilation and a potentially hazardous atmosphere the safe oxygen level in a confined space is generally considered to be between 19.5% and 23.5% by volume oxygen levels below 19.5% can lead to impaired judgment unconsciousness and even death while oxygen levels above 23.5% can increase the risk of fire and explosion it's important to monitor oxygen levels in confined spaces before entering them this can be done using a portable oxygen monitor that measures the concentration of oxygen in the air if oxygen levels are found to be below the safe range the space should be ventilated before any work is carried out it's also essential to monitor for other gases such as carbon monoxide hydrogen sulfide and methane which can be present in confined spaces and pose additional risks to worker safety testing for these gases should be done before workers enter the space and during work if conditions change a confined space permit is a document that outlines the necessary precautions and procedures for entry into a confined space It's typically issued by a company or organization that is responsible for the safety of workers who enter and work in confined spaces. The permit serves as a written record of the hazards associated with the confined space, the precautions that must be taken, and the responsibilities of the workers involved. It's designed to ensure that everyone involved in the entry process is aware of the potential hazards and knows how to minimize the risks. A confined space permit typically includes the following information. Identification of the confined space. Hazards associated with the confined space. precautions and procedures to be followed before during and after entry names and roles of the workers involved dates and times of entry and exit emergency contact information and rescue procedures atmospheric monitoring results identify and evaluate confined spaces Before any work begins, it's essential to identify and evaluate all confined spaces on the work site. Determine if any of these spaces present a hazard or contain hazardous materials. Train workers, workers who enter and work in confined spaces should receive specialized training on the hazards associated with these spaces as well as the proper use of equipment and safety procedures. Develop a confined space program. A comprehensive program should be established to address all aspects of confined space entry and work, including hazard identification, safety procedures, and rescue plans. Use appropriate personal protective equipment, pay, pay such as respiratory protection, safety harnesses, and protective clothing may be required for workers entering confined spaces. ensure adequate ventilation proper ventilation is crucial to maintain safe air quality in confined spaces the air should be monitored and tested for harmful gases and other contaminants establish communication protocols communication systems should be established between workers inside and outside the confined space to ensure proper monitoring and response in case of an emergency Have a rescue plan. In the event of an emergency, workers must be able to exit the confined space quickly and safely. 
a rescue plan should be established, and workers trained on the proper procedures. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share and comment.